Welcome back. How is everybody doing? I didn't want to come back. <laughs> Good. Was nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was beautiful. Thanks. All very welcome. Can, can our embodied soul stay embodied all the time? It is supposed to. Okay. Um, yeah, it is supposed to. Um, and what do you mean by so? Because we don't have a like, whole soul with us. We only have a fraction of it. Not a whole soul. A whole soul is just way too much for our body to handle right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think my, my soul comes and says, oh shit, man, I'm not going in there. <laughs> 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 it's too crazy in that place <laughs> maybe or maybe it would say whoa that sounds interesting that's, <laughs> that's how we go at it <laughs> the soul is not consciousness is it? hmm um it is a part of consciousness. It is definitely a part of consciousness. Um, consciousness exists, can exist outside of the soul. Because consciousness mm -hmm. exists first before soul comes along. So a soul is simply a vehicle for soul. Uh, so sorry, a soul is a vehicle for the consciousness. Just like the soul is also a vehicle of the body, yeah? Or the body is a vehicle for the soul. Mm. Um, the body... Is something different. Um, the body is its own entity, or I should say, it's its own thing. It has its own intelligence. It can have it can have a soul in it, but it doesn't have to. It can uh, the body can exist without a soul. Really? I told that, you know, to be alive, you have to have soul. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think so. That's that's not my belief. You can have a soul, um, but you don't necessarily have to have a soul. Like they're, they're a soulless body, yes. There is there such... are... so like they have no emotion, nothing. I can't. I don't know. I haven't really. Um, I haven't come across it, so I don't quite know what that is. But I do know that such a thing exists. Okay, let's. Um, Let's get back to, okay. okay, so unique soul signature. We still have a little bit more to, to talk about. Um, so next thing is, okay, self-love. I mentioned a little bit about um, what self-love is. Um, <clears throat> 
as uh, when I was talking about unique soul signature. So self-love. How how do I how do I um go into it? My understanding of love is is that we don't know what love is yet as a human as a human collective. We are simply exploring what love is. Um, we know something about love. What we the when we use the word love right now to um to say how we feel that feeling that emotion is only a fraction of what the idea of love actually is so that's that's what i want to convey is that we we think of like oh so up till now my experience of love is only a very small fraction of what i know on a soul level what love actually can embody love is basically i would say the closest word that i can use to describe the universal creator and our human experience is so limited that we don't well, well okay i i know that i cannot experience the the level of love at a universal creator level of love so this is what we are here to to learn to experience is really the experience of love but ever expanding our experience and our understanding of what love is as we grow as a human collective and then as i mentioned self so right now or i should say um most people would think of self as me myself and i that's only one level of understanding of self and in the fifth dimension we are going to explore and expand that definition of self until we get to the heart where we understand that self is not just this body actually everyone else that we can simply see or get to know it's also another version of self it's another version of ourselves and at some point we we would actually not just intellectually know this but actually be able to feel so connected with everyone else that we will not even want to think of harming someone else because it's like harming ourselves um most i would say sane people would not try to cut ourselves deliberately or kill ourselves do those things to ourselves is because yeah when you like if you are a, a logical human being you don't want to do anything bad to yourself it's just that right now our definition of self is just this body but actually self is everyone else um each unique soul took on a perspective so this so winnie as a soul took on the perspective of this body this um particular family lineage and all of that this, but that is just one experience that's one facet of the whole reality and the and 
another aspect of me is say Charlotte that took on all her experience as being as living her life as that entirely different seemingly different um, character however we actually both just playing roles we are actually all part of one big consciousness in oneness we are all just part of the the human collective just that each one took on a character so the character i'm playing is winnie and charlotte and all those different other people you took on different roles we each took on different roles we created all these backstories for ourselves so right now like some of you may look at me and like what is what did she smoke and thinking that i'm not talking any sense but however that is really my understanding of reality is that everyone that i meet and see out there is actually another version of myself that's my understanding do i always behave like that no not quite i haven't, haven't quite integrated all that understanding within me as well and um, within so i'm not always walking what i'm talking however my understanding is that um when and one day when i've integrated all of my behavior into what i my understanding is then i would be able to really experience other people around me my whole environment as being all of me as well so something to look forward to so then how do i reclaim my power um any comments questions oh there's lots <laughs> this is pretty big <laughs> pretty big okay well um i think at the beginning you you sort of identified that until we know ourselves until we have learned who we are that's maybe the beginning steps of knowing who we are of learning our not only just our own body like our just, just we're not just our body but all the other parts of ourselves as well so we understand ourselves and and have taken away all the distractions so that we can know ourselves then then the, then the second would be maybe to to feel a connection with somebody else but then not only as somebody else then to me I want to have love for my my planet and love for for animals and love for all of it not just not just love for each other or not just love for myself but love for all and, yeah. and you know that i don't know <laughs> there's a lot of stuff there <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> thank you for catching that <laughs> <laughs> yes that's that's what that's what i meant to say <laughs> <laughs> it's big it's big <laughs> it is we yeah and, and one thing i heard just the other day just happened to be just just because it, uh, it relates here so well is that we we have been so dysfunctional in our in our intimacy with with uh, our sexual intimacy that we are missing out in so 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 much we don't even know we don't even realize how much we've been distorted i i think i believe that oh yeah definitely yeah. there's been so many taboos about sex we are um, most people like if you want to crack a joke um sex jokes <laughs> we joke about it we shy away from it uh, so so many conditioning about all that why because it's so powerful yeah but we don't even know the power of it i don't think so no, we, don't. we don't know ourselves first of all first of all we don't even know our own power or our own selves so it's hard to be intimate with somebody else when you don't even know your own self. And you have so many 
contorted ideas and beliefs and yeah impressions that have been put upon you mm -hmm. yeah yes perfect yep <laughs> perfectly imperfect yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> but we're getting there we're getting there but we are getting there yes we um <laughs> as, as jason estes mentioned we are playing the um oh, what is that the infinite game it's like yes right now yes we have a lot of misinformation <laughs> and you know hang-ups <laughs> but that's that's why it's so um that's why it's so so much fun to be here that's that's all ahead of us that's we have yet to um, imagine. We have yet to experience all of that. The joy of sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got the first thing. We got the understand. We got the awareness. Yeah. We have awareness yeah. of what, what we, where we need to go. <laughs> yes. And, yep. All of that. So, actually, that is the thank you for your comment. Thank you for your sharing. That actually is a very good segue for me to. Oh, okay. Any other comments before I segue? Can you just summarize what you and Charlotte just said? It sort of didn't sink in me. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes. Um, hmm. Is that we? Uh, okay. So, in short, we don't even we don't even have one percent, or even we haven't even scratched the uh, the surface of the totality of the wonderful experience that we actually can have in human bodies, and we don't know actually how powerful we are. We can create so many things. We can actually experience so much joy, whereas up until now, most of us has actually created more negative feelings for us to experience rather than wonderful um, experience. For example, sex. Um, I think it was there's there's actually how many levels of orgasm that we we can have. I I forgot like at least I, th I thought it was about seven or nine levels of orgasm that we can have and most people maybe yeah. one or two so especially we because all because of there's so much taboo about sexuality and um just enjoying the human body there's and even joy is is like you know how many people you know is always living in joy? Very, very few. It's like those people, we think of them as being crazy. Or we look at them as being crazy. So, yeah, the, we actually have so much more to look forward to. Because now we actually in the, um, the right environment to explore all of that. Right, so okay, that's gotcha. that's kind of what we talked about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're at the very be tiny baby steps. Yep, we we yes. So now my segue is into so how do we reclaim our um power? The um so that's something that I probably would finish about next week but you know this week what I can do is is talk about um, because we have given away our power through generations it's not just one it, it's not something that happened during one lifetime many many generations so and I have already mentioned that the people um, that we that are most in our um, love circle is really the people that can influence whether to empower or disempower us the most as well. So that's why I want to segue into talking about um, reclaiming your power from 
your lineage, from your parents. Um, not, not trying to blame any parent. I'm quite sure that they did the best they could under the circumstances. It is just that now that we're here, we have a very different understanding of what life truly is about. And that there are so many things that we are yet to explore. We are yet to, we have yet to um, create for ourselves to experience. So the first thing first is to reclaim our power from our lineage. So that's the topic of my final meditation. So I thought it would be best to just do it rather than talk about doing it. So let's do that. Let's just claim our power back. Okay. 